What's the step by step now inshaAllah ta'ala for a person as they're getting into the time, as they're getting into the process of Hajj? The sunnahs of entering ihram in the, at the miqat. These are the sunnahs now of entering into the state of ihram at the miqat. A person, you know, both men and women uh, would bathe themselves. So you take a shower that can be done at the hotel before you actually get to the, uh, to the miqat, to the station. Um, trimming the mustache, trimming the, the, uh, the, the armpit hair, uh, pubic hair and nails, applying perfume to the body. Um, this is particularly for the men, you know, here to apply perfume to the body, not to the ihram itself, but to the body, you know, to clean yourself really well and to apply perfume to the body. And then you can wear the ihram towels um, on top. At that point, you make the intention, if you're passing through the miqat in Medina, you can do all of those things before you leave Medina, but without the intention of entering into ihram. And then once you get to the miqat, you make the intention. What that means is you do all of your preparation at the hotel. Once you get to the miqat, all you're going to do is at that point, that's where you make your intention for Umrah um, and Hajj if you're doing Quran, right? So, but for the most part, if you're doing Tamattur, are you guys lost here yet or not? All right, good. Tamattur, which is what most people will be doing, then you'll make the intention for Umrah. But the point is, you can do everything in Medina when you get to the station, when you get to the miqat. You simply make your intention at that point. Now, what if you're passing through the miqat on the plane? What do you do? Do you go take a shower on the plane? Start trimming your, you know, go through all that stuff on the plane. What do you do? Do it before your flight. You can wear your haram. And while you're flying over the miqat, usually the pilot will announce it, right? And the pilot will let you know, and it's, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes before landing that you're passing over the miqat as you're getting into, uh, into Jeddah, all right? So at that point, what you do is you make the intention for ihram. If you are doing tamattur, all right, which is umrah without hajj because you're going to take a break between umrah and hajj, all right? So if you're doing tamattur, at that point you will say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ عُمْرَةً or لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِعُمْرَةً Alright, both of them are fine. That here I come to you, O Allah, with Umrah. So you're going to announce the intention for Umrah. Alright, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِعُمْرَةً لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِعُمْرَةً and so you, you would then continue on with the talbiyah. But the point is, at that point, you will make the intention verbally, inshallah ta'ala, for Umrah. If you're doing Umrah and Hajj together, so if you're doing Quran, you're going in on the 7th or the 8th of Dhul-Hijjah, <coughs> then you would say, لَبَيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ عُمْرَةً وَحَجْ So you would say, bi Umrah wa Hajj, or here I come to you, O Allah, with Umrah and Hajj, because you're combining both intentions in one. Otherwise, you're simply going to say, لَبَيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِعُمْرَةً If you're doing Hajj on behalf of someone else, now the major condition to do Hajj on behalf of someone else is that you've already done Hajj for yourself. Then you will say, لَبَيْكَ عَنْ and then you'll name the person. So, لَبَيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِعُمْرَةً لَبَيْكَ عَنْ and then name the person. All right? Now, uh, let's say, by the way, if you're doing Tamattur, you're doing Umrah and you're doing Hajj separately and you've done Umrah in the past but you haven't done Hajj in the past. Maybe this is a little too confusing right now but I'll just put it out there inshallah ta'ala and then I'll, we'll, we'll probably revisit it if someone has a detailed question. I can, you know, if I'm doing Tamattur, I'm separating the intention for Umrah and Hajj. And many of the fuqaha, including Dr. Salah Hassawi, would, would allow a person to actually do the Umrah on behalf of someone and the Hajj on behalf of someone else or the Hajj on behalf of yourself. So because it's two separate intentions at that point, you can do this on behalf of someone and this not necessarily on behalf of someone or vice versa. So if I'm doing Hajj on behalf of my mother, and I've done Hajj and Umrah multiple times in the past, I could choose to do Umrah on behalf of my father and Hajj on behalf of my mother. I can make the intention 
on behalf of one person for Umrah or on behalf of, for the, of the other person for Hajj if I'm doing tamattu' because it's two separate intentions, two separate declarations and there's a break in the ihram in between. You guys understand that? Okay, good. Um, so at, at that point you would announce your intention and then you, could, you would pray two rak'ahs. Now there's a difference of opinion about the two rak'ahs here, whether the Prophet ﷺ taught us to pray two rak'ahs for ihram as a sunnah for ihram or the Prophet ﷺ simply would, you know, is, is teaching us to pray those two rak'ahs because they come as a sunnah for something else. All right, but the majority of the scholars would say that there is actually a sunnah for ihram, two rak'ahs for ihram, and it's obviously safe and there's no problem with that. But if you're passing through at the time of salah anyway, so for example, you're going to pray dhuhr or asr, then in that situation, many scholars would say that that takes the place um, of ihram or of any type of two rak'ahs sunnah for ihram, because at the end of the day, it's a sunnah. All right, so there's no sacrifice in that regard or anything of that sort. Um, but it's it's good inshallah ta'ala to practice that, to pray two rak'ahs inshallah with the intention um, uh, of, uh, of that talbiyah. And basically what you would do is you get to the miqat, you would pray your two rak'ahs, and then after you pray your two rak'ahs, you announce your intention. All right? So you get to the miqat, you pray your two rak'ahs, and then you would announce your intention after um, those two rak'ahs. Now, what if you miss this entire process? Let's say that you fell asleep on the plane and you passed over the miqat and you woke up and you were already in Jeddah. What do you do? Go back to miqat? What do you guys think? Or let's say that you're on a bus from Medina and you knocked out on the bus, you woke up and you're already halfway through. Do you tell the bus driver, go back to miqat? No, so basically once you've passed the miqat, if you missed this whole period of making the intention, then you'll simply offer a sacrifice, you'll, you'll, you'll offer a fidya. So it's not a rukun of hajj or umrah that the intention be made at the miqat, it's a wajib. So because that wajib has been missed, then a sacrifice, a fidya would be in its place, okay? Uh, what about a woman that is on her uh, menstrual cycle? Basically, a woman that is in that, in that state will still declare ihram and she will still do all of the actions except for tawaf. Okay? So she still will do all of the actions except for tawaf. A lot of sisters make the mistake where they say, well, I can't go into ihram right now, I can't do any of these things. No, a woman will still do everything that everyone else is doing, but she will not do salah and she would not do tawaf when it comes to the actions. Um, of Hajj or Umrah. So she's not going to pray or do Tawaf. Uh, 